Hey folks, it's Real Honesty with John Ritland. I'm John Ritland. Dixie Carter's out of power in TNA. Thank God, 2017's off to a roaring start already. Ding dong, the witch is dead. She's not dead, and I don't wish ill on her. <clears throat> but she is out as chairman of Impact Wrestling. TNA, Impact Wrestling, whatever you want to call it. They need to just go to calling it Impact Wrestling and not say TNA anymore. There's just no reason. Drop the TNA name and just make it Impact. Um, she's going to be, I guess, she's joined the advisory board of Fight Media Group, and basically it holds all combat sports-related assets of Anthem. Her focus will be on the global growth of combat sports-related brands owned by Anthem. So she might actually go out and promote stuff, which is more than she did for TNA, because she didn't know how to market it at all, even though India has a stake in it. And they got a pretty good audience in the UK. She could never grow the brand in the USA. Went from network to network. So hopefully, hopefully this can right the ship for TNA. Because TNA, while they have some problems, at least they'll be getting paid on time, hopefully, since Fight Network seems to have a pretty good, you know, pretty good set amount of cash. They own quite a few brands. I'm unfamiliar with the exact list, but I know that they're pretty successful from talking to especially a few of my friends in Canada. They say Fight Network's pretty good. And it's just really, really good news. It's good news for any of the talents, any of the younger talents, any of the talents that are getting started. I just want Impact Wrestling to focus this year on rebuilding its brand. Basically, because that's what it needs to do. Dixie, out of power, thank God. That's the one cog that needed to be replaced because everything else had been you know, tweaked about and Jeff Jarrett had left and then Jim Cornette, Dutch Mantel had left. Um, I think, I think Dutch left after Jim. I don't remember. And then you had Bischoff and Hogan come in and that didn't really help. Um, whether it was because of either of those guys or just spending too much money and they lost a whole bunch of stars and they tried to build new stars and they've done a good job with guys like EC3, Matt Hardy has reinvented himself, Jeff Hardy has reinvented himself, Lashley has done pretty well for himself, Drew Galloway has done very good for himself in TNA and various independents, um, Eli Drake is a pretty damn good talent. This is kind of going to go away from Dixie uh, being out of power because thank God she is. I mean, this just this gives me so much hope for TNA because I was not hopeful, especially after watching Bound for Glory. I was not hopeful at all because they struggled so much just to get that pay per view off the ground. Um, the idea here is that hopefully TNA can get younger talent and stuff like that because as much as as much as like it's watching a train wreck with the Hardy Boys, because it basically is. I mean, you know, Matt and Jeff have, like I said, done a great job reinventing themselves, but Matt's going to be 43 this year. Jeff's going to be 40. And with the way they beat up their bodies for years, their bodies probably feel older than that. <clears throat> and even though TNA doesn't have the lengthy schedule and the crazy schedule that WWE does or even Ring of Honor or New Japan does, they still are going to be breaking down pretty soon. you got to build younger stars. Um, guys like Abyss, who have been around in TNA for, I believe, 13 years at this point. I think he started in 2003. He's got to be breaking down. You got The decay is pretty good, but they're going to have a short shelf life. You're going to need to find another monster because I don't know how much time Abyss has left. TNA has some holes, but they can fill them. As long as they can go with guy, younger guys, EC3 is very established. I mentioned Drew Galloway, Eli Drake. Um, get rid of Shira. I mean, I know that India has invested money, or like, in, uh, in, I forget the name of the company. Forgive me if I get it wrong. India Six. I don't even think that's right. But some TV station, some big TV station in um, India has like invested a good amount of money in TNA, and they still haven't toured there. And hopefully, they'll actually tour there and make good on the investment that India has made. Um, it would actually look good for the company to um, broadcast from India, or at least tape in India to show for later. <clears throat> but they need to stockpile with young talent. And I'm not saying sign, like, say, 50 guys, and, you know, say, like, 30 guys and, like, 15 women. They need to pick and choose and pick and choose and make sure that they can good, get a good pay scale and everything. Because even though Fight Network is doing a good job, um, like making it sound all good, if they put the right people in charge, I think it actually will be a great benefit for Impact Wrestling, and it'll be a great plus for wrestling itself. 
New Japan Pro Wrestling is still doing well. Not great, but they're doing well. Wrestle Kingdom 11, I didn't see it yet, but I've heard it's very good. Um, same thing like what I saw Wrestle Kingdom 10, it's got to be stellar. And Ring of Honor, they're losing some talents, but they have a good core also <clears throat> that they can hopefully keep. The more companies that stick around, the better. Lucha Underground, not so sure about Lucha Underground because I, I haven't been able to really keep up on Season 3. But the more stuff, the more places where talents can go besides just WWE, and I'm a WWE fan. I've been a WWE fan, WCW fan, and fan of various companies. But the more companies that exist now that can be around, like, you know, Evolve, and I think Evolve even has a relationship with WWE, but like PWG <clears throat> and Big Time Wrestling, various ones like that. If they can keep, if they, if they can, you know, keep going on an upward motion, it'll be very good to see where wrestling is this year and in years in the future because more companies need to exist. <clears throat> it can get to where maybe it's not a territory time, but it can thrive, and wrestling can be fun. Wrestling can be fun again, because that's really what wrestling needs to be. Wrestling just needs to be fun. So, I wish nothing but the best for companies like New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and various other independents. I don't know, again, I don't know about Lucha Underground, because I've heard that, that their TV products here and there. Again, I have not been able to watch Season 3. I had to stop in most of the way through Season 2. Impact, I really, really hope, can become at least what it was in 05 to 09. Because to me, 2005 to 2009, I enjoyed the TNA TV product more than I did WWE. On, I don't want to say like a consistent weekly basis, but more often than not, I was more excited to watch the TNA product than I was WWE. And even for a little bit of a period in 2010, 2011, and then they tried to make it WCW 2.0 and it just didn't work. But if TNA can get back to, like, what they were at in 05, 09, 05 to 09, and get to where maybe not everything's a home run, but stuff's better and stuff's good, if they can get where they use the young talent and use some veterans, stuff like that. Because guys like Lashley and the Hardys are not going to last very long. You have to phase them out eventually. Whether they're at the top of their game or not, you're kind of... It's getting, it's getting to where you got to go with youth and go with some experienced youth. And Drew Galloway could be the front of that, and the same with EC3, and Eli Drake, like I said. And there are others I'm sure that I'm missing, but, you know, st still, whatever. Not Grado. Get Grado out of there. Grado's gr Grado may be over in the UK. He is terrible in the US. Anyway, and that's just my opinion. He's just a, ter he, he's just a terrible, he comes across terrible on TV. He may not be a terrible guy. I mean, I'm not going to say that at all. But the way he comes across on TV just is not good. It does not pop the ratings, and same with Shira. Um... You know, from India, he's he's not any good. Like the guy's been around for a couple of years, and he's still that bad. So hopefully, TNA can right the ship and continue to go on an upward motion. That is what I'm hoping for. Now Dixie's out of power. Dixie, it it couldn't happen to a better person. I just wish it had been a little bit worse for you because out of all the people you screwed out of stuff, it's just a shame that you're still part of the company. But at least you can make decisions that could ruin impact more. Now Fight Network, Anthem, Sports, whatever whatever your label is, make Impact make Impact Wrestling matter as much as it did before. Rebuild the brand and get wrestling fans excited about it. I'm stoked about it. And I'm stoked about 2017 on. Let's hope for a great year in wrestling, folks. Anyway, that is what I think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, share, comment, and subscribe. My Twitter link is in the description. It's been Real Honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin, and I'll see you soon.